Welcome to Kicking with Bobby Joe. Today I'm going to be harvesting chestnuts. I have this beautiful old chestnut tree taking up the back corner of my yard and it is loaded down with chestnuts. It was fully grown and producing chestnuts when my husband's family moved here in 1975. He said when they were kids they climbed on it because it was a great climbing tree. I have a canopy over this entire corner of the yard from this huge old chestnut tree. I've been told that it is an American chestnut. I know that there are other edible chestnuts like the European chestnut and the Chinese chestnut. If mine is indeed an American chestnut, like I've been told, I am not sure how it survived the blight. It is a beautiful tree to have on our property and supplies bushels of chestnuts each year. In the Smokies, the chestnuts would get 75 feet tall. They would shoot straight up towards the sun. And in wide open places, the chestnut tree would spread out like mine does. This time of year, I keep finding peanuts left in my bird feeders, and I wonder why the blue jays aren't eating my peanuts, because they normally love the peanuts. Well, I discovered that they love chestnuts too. Apparently, they like chestnuts more than they like peanuts. During the 1800s, the American chestnut was one of the most widespread and useful trees east of the Mississippi River. It is estimated that about 25% of the trees on the eastern seaboard were chestnuts before the blight took over. The chestnut blight was accidentally introduced and discovered at the Bronx Zoo in New York City in 1904 after the Asian chestnut that was imported had a fungus and that's where the blight came from. By 1940, an estimated 4 billion American chestnuts were killed by the blight. Chestnuts were the primary winter food for turkey, deer, bear, birds, squirrels, raccoons, chipmunks, livestock, and even humans. This part of the video was taken in May. My chestnut tree is starting to bloom and all of these long stringy looking blooms will turn into white flowers. The entire tree will be covered with them and it will look like the tree is covered in snow. Then the bees show up because they love the chestnut blooms. Also, on warm summer nights, this tree is lit up with lightning bugs. It's a beautiful sight to see. And here's a photo of this tree last November when all the leaves are finally yellow. Isn't it beautiful? It is late September when this video was filmed where I was harvesting the chestnuts and I only had a few chestnuts on the ground at this time. It is now late October and I can't even walk on that corner of the yard without stepping on a chestnut. When harvesting chestnuts, you want to make sure you beat the squirrels to the chestnuts because the squirrels love the chestnuts. First, I make sure I have on shoes that the chestnut burrs won't stick through. Do not wear cloth shoes when harvesting chestnuts. Also, make sure you have thorn-proof gloves or you wear two pairs of thick gloves. These are my gloves I bought for taking care of my rose bush. They're supposed to be thorn proof. The chestnut burrs have very sharp spikes all the way around, so you do not want to get stuck by one of these. And there are many different ways to harvest chestnuts. Everyone does it their own way. I want the burrs off the ground because I do have dogs and I don't need them stepping on a burr with their paws. I know there's probably easier ways to do this. I have seen this tool called a nut wizard that just rolls over the chestnut burr, picks them up, and then you just dump them into a bucket. I don't have any fancy tools. So I'm just going to stick with my rake. So I just rake them into piles. Then I have a seat and I go through them one at a time, removing the chestnut from the burr. I throw the burr in the wheelbarrow and they will be going into my compost pile. And at this time, I take time to examine the chestnuts to make sure there's no holes in them. If there are holes, I throw them to the side for the squirrels. If they look fine, I throw them in my bucket. See all the chestnuts I got from this small pile? This is nothing compared to what will be on the ground in October and November. And if the chestnut won't pop out of the burr, you can always place it on the ground and roll it under your shoe to get the chestnut to loosen up and fall out. Chestnuts have a low glycemic index, which is great for diabetics. Although people on keto diets should avoid chestnuts because they are high in net carbs. I will be eating my roasted chestnuts. I am a diabetic, but I'm also watching my carb intake, but I don't have these every day and it's not gonna hurt to have these every now and then. Now that I have a bucket of chestnuts, I'm going to rinse them off while I'm outside to get that first layer of dirt off of them. And then I'm gonna take them in the kitchen. 
Now I'm gonna fill my kitchen sink with water and rinse them off in here. The chestnuts should sink to the bottom of the sink. Any chestnuts floating need to be tossed back outside for the wildlife because they're not any good. And that is it for harvesting chestnuts. After they're rinsed, dry them and store them in the fridge until you're ready to use. They are best used as soon as possible for the freshest chestnut flavor. I will show you how I roast my chestnuts on my Lodge Kickoff Grill in the next cooking video. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe for more do-it-yourself projects, bird videos, kitchen tips, gardening, and more jewel-worthy human and doggy treats. Y'all have a blessed day.